and the reason why the little boy came up to me as the presentation I did one day, and he said, you sound just like Tom Taylor. So that's why I tried to break up the mood a little bit. But I got a funny story to tell you. One day I wanted to really irritate somebody because I was kind of feeling sorry for myself. I went through the drive through at the fast food restaurant. And I said, I want, I want, I want, I want. <laughs> and they said, go to the next window, please. <laughs> they didn't like me very well. You know, um, being a learner me is very difficult. Now, I speak with what's called a hands-free device. I have a little voice prosthesis that has been inserted through my esophagus wall. And I meant to tell you all, before laryngectomy surgery, you know, you have an esophagus and you have a trachea. Your esophagus goes all the way through your mouth and your stomach. Your trachea is your breathing. That's your nose and your mouth. As you can see, I can drink just like you do. But after laryngectomy surgery, my esophagus stays the same like yours. But my trachea on my windpipe is now curved and it comes out my neck. You see my nose and my mouth. My mouth's for eating and talking. My nose is good for nothing. All it does is run. Because I can't even blow my nose. I can't inhale. I can't blow out birthday candles anymore. I can't even smell the cake making. I'm not supposed to go swimming, but when people tell me I can't do something, I do it. So I took all this off, put my thumb over my neck, and I went underwater for the first time in nine years. And it felt good. I went swimming. You might wonder, well, how do you take showers? Well, I've been a laryngectomy for 10 years now. And I very carefully take a shower. I get my head washed. Once in a while, I get a little bit of water in there. Because you see, if I were to get in water over my head, I would drown just like that. Because I have this hole here and my lungs are right here. And they would fill up with water immediately and I would drown.